this session we're going to focus on verse 10 of 1 Peter 4. And the question we're going to ask is, how does Peter think about spiritual gifts in this context? And how do we, how, how will that affect the way we use our gifts? And the, the emphasis of method that I want to stress is, let's stay right here. Because the temptation when we talk about spiritual gifts is, oh, let's run over to 1 Corinthians 12 or let's go to Romans 12 because there you've got a long list of gifts and it talks about how to use them and what they are. And so let's go find out the full teaching over there and come and pour it in here. Let's not do that. Let's stay right here and take every, every word seriously, all the main words, and see whether or not this verse 10 yields really helpful insight into spiritual gifts. So, Father, as we look at verse 10 in particular in context now, we really want to experience the fullness of your varied grace in our lives and then through our gifting to bend that grace out horizontally to other people and be a means to their good, both temporal and eternal. Help us, I pray now in Jesus' name, to see what's here. Amen. So let's let's see verse 10 in context. The end of all things is at hand. So we've got an end time since Jesus came, and it may be growing more urgent all the time. And as it grows more urgent, therefore, therefore, be self-controlled and sober-minded. So the end time urgency yields a sober-mindedness. And then For the sake of your prayers, that sober-mindedness yields a life of earnest prayer to call upon God that he act in these end times. Act how? Above all, keep loving one another. That's what we're praying for. God, make us a loving people, powerfully helpful to each other, covering a multitude of sins. And then he gets more specific. Show hospitality. So the form that love takes here is to open our homes, take risks, inconvenience ourselves, and do it not grumbling, joyfully. Oh, what a beautiful thing when people are willing to take risks with their home, open them up, and never grumble at the inconvenience of it. So there's the context. And then comes a more specific act of love. So we open our homes We don't grumble, and now we serve one another with these gifts that God has given us. So you can picture it. Let's. It's the end times. The 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 the, uh, hostilities around us are increasing. Makes us sober. We cry out to God in prayer. We want to love each other, so we open our homes to gather in. There may be no other place to go. We don't grumble about it. And while we're there, each of us has a gift and we start serving each other so that we build each other up in this situation. So we have uh, end times leading to sober-mindedness, leading to prayer urgently, leading to love, specifically manifest in hospitality, And in that hospitality, without grumbling, we serve with gifts. So there's the context. Now let's go to verse 10, and we'll take two sessions on this. So let's just see what we can see in the word each. As each has received a gift, use it to serve one another as good stewards of God's varied grace. So focus first on this word, each, here. And clearly, it's connected to gift. Each has received a gift. But look, it's also connected to stewards. As each has received a gift, let each use it to serve each other. Use it as, each as, good stewards. Now, why why is that? provocative and revolutionary 500 years ago. 
because uh, when you think of the word steward here, I know it's, it's not a word we use very often, but the picture is, so here's an owner of a, of a home. And he's got lots of members in his household. And to take care of these members, he hires a steward. And the steward is given charge of the materials of the householder. So this is God in the image. And then the steward meets people's needs with what they need on behalf of the owner. That's the picture of a steward. Now here's here's the catch. As each has received a gift, let each serve others as good stewards, which means this fellow is this fellow, and this fellow is this fellow, and everybody here is this fellow. These these people are stewarding grace for each other. This is revolutionary. We, we I suppose us moderns, we just, in our democratic situation, we just take for granted that the the ministry of, of the church, the lay people to the lay people, and the burden and the responsibility to minister grace to each other, good stewards of grace, was a revolutionary idea at the time of the Reformation. So maybe this would be a good place to stop. So let me sum up so far. So you've got uh, the end is at hand. Let that make you sober-minded. Let your sober-mindedness lead you to pray earnestly for God's help. And what you want him to do is give you the power and the wisdom and the grace to love other people. And let that love make you willing to risk opening your home. It's called just open, open home, hospitality. And in that open home, what are you going to do? You're going to do this, each serving others with gifts. Now, next time on this text, we'll do one more session on this text. I want us to ask more specifically, what are spiritual gifts and what's involved in this service and what does varied imply for us here? But for now, let's know that as we open our homes, we should always be thinking, how can I serve others with the grace of God that has been given to me?